Today's video is sponsored by Into The AM. Into The AM is a men's clothing label with a huge variety of eccentric designs and products such as graphic tees, basic tees, jackets, hoodies, underwear, lounge shorts, and much more. I even have a couple items myself. They are shrink resistant, which is a breath of fresh air for someone as tall as I am, and they are extremely soft and cozy, another must for me because, you know, I like wearing clothes that actually feel good. And you can get 10% off if you use my discount code in the description box below. Be sure to check out my partners at Movie Scene Canada, and if you want to support the channel, please be sure to check out my Patreon page to take part in monthly hangout watch-alongs, watch content early, and be entered to win copies of movies every single month. Now, onto the video. Hey guys, my name is Brandon, aka The Brando Critic, and I just saw Jurassic World Dominion, and today I'm gonna give you my honest, no BS, non-spoiler review, and tell you if it's worth the watch. So, we got Jurassic World Dominion, the third film in the Jurassic World trilogy, and the sixth Jurassic Park movie that we've seen on the big screen, and it is directed by, once again, Colin Trevorrow, or Trevorrow, or however you like to pronounce his name, and you know him from such films as Jurassic World, Safety Not Guaranteed, The Book of Henry, and according to a lot of Star Wars fans, the director who would have made a better episode nine. And it stars Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, Dewanda Wise, Laura Dern, Sam Neill, and Jeff Goldblum. And the story is that dinosaurs and humans are now living in a world coexisting, but we have a company called Biosyn, because, you know, this movie is extremely subtle. And Biosyn's plan is to create these giant locusts using DNA from dinosaurs. At least I think that's what happened. Again, this movie is pretty dumb. But they're creating these giant locusts to eat the entire world's crop supply, except for the crops made by Biosyn. So eventually there's gonna be a giant world famine and Biosyn will be able to control the world's food supply. I think, I think that's what happened. And Dr. Ellie Sadler and Dr. Alan Grant are the ones to stop this madness. However, Biosyn also wants to kidnap a little girl, the little girl who was a clone in the last movie. Maisie Lockwood is her name, the granddaughter of Mr. Lockwood, who was Dr. Hammond's right-hand man in the creation of Jurassic Park. Again, this is all you know, Fallen Kingdom nonsense. But this girl happens to be the adopted daughter of Owen Grady and Claire, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard's characters. So they need to go on this giant rescue mission for their daughter. That is the story of Jurassic World Dominion. But is this movie worth a watch? Now, I would generally say no, absolutely not. Cause this movie is dumb. It is messy. It is oversaturated, over bloated, and it treats the audience like idiots. However, and I can't believe I'm saying this, Despite all of the problems that this movie has, and trust me, there are many, many, many problems in this movie. I kind of enjoyed it. I didn't think it was actually that bad. After this movie, I said to myself, you know what? I enjoyed watching Jurassic World Dominion. Oh, it's dumb and it's stupid, but I can't lie to you guys. I actually had fun watching this movie. This is like the ultimate guilty pleasure movie for me. And the best two ways I can describe this movie is that it feels like a 1980s Saturday morning cartoon show. Every single character is paper thin. It's over the top, silly, nonsensical. Your suspension of disbelief gets a major workout, even for a film about dinosaurs. And it's just full of schlock. Or if you want a food example, imagine going into your fridge and eating a giant tub of icing. It tastes good, but you know it's not really that good for you. In fact, it's actually quite terrible for you. But let's talk about all those terrible things, all the bad things, because I want to end this review on a high note. Okay, worst part of the movie, Isabella Sermon as Maisie Lockwood. She was insufferable, I will admit. She only really has one character trait. She's snarky. Of course, she's a teenager, right? And they're supposed to rebel against their parents, but she's bitter about being a clone. And that's it. She's not a good actress. This is not a good performance. And I looked at her IMDb page. She's only in the Jurassic World movies. And I think the reason why they cast her is because they needed to make some genetically modified human, some clone. They need to get this like perfect specimen, right? And of course she's a beautiful girl. That's why she's in these movies. Because of her looks, not her acting ability. The CGI, I will admit near the end, it looked pretty good. But there were many shots in the beginning where I'm like, oh my God, this looks just, oh terrible. I was I was really reminiscing about the days of Jurassic Park, the first movie. And one shot an example, there's a close up of Blue, that one raptor from the previous two films. Oh my god, did it look terrible. Now I talked about Maisie already, but for the most part the characters were just lame, just really paper thin. Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard don't 
actually have any character in this movie. Sure, Claire had a bit of an arc in the first movie. She was kind of like that uptight businesswoman, only caring about the numbers and not really caring about the animal life side of the whole situation. But the reason why these characters are in these movies is because they were in the previous ones. Owen is simply a superhero. He really has no character flaws. He's just kind of like that boring muscle action hero guy. Again, like I said, 80 Saturday morning cartoon show. And we have the villain, Campbell Scott, AKA Richard Parker from the Amazing Spider-Man movies. I made the joke during the screening that, you know, when he left Peter Parker in those movies, he actually ended up working with dinosaurs in this movie. But again, I'm sure I'm not the only one to make that joke, but he actually plays Lewis Dodgson. You know, the guy in the hat from the original, the one with the shaving cream. He kind of has this Steve Jobs thing going on, but what does he want? Why does he want it? How's he gonna achieve it? What's his character really about? We don't know. Again, this is an 80s cartoon show type of vibe. Paper thin, he's the bad guy because he's the bad guy. Chris Pratt, Owen is the cool guy because he's the hero and he looks cool and he does cool things. That's all we need. And the story. It's bloated, it's over the top, it's all over the place, it's stupid, it's dumb. And what really sucks is that this movie did fall into this category that it was trying to be cool. There's one character who works in the dinosaur black market fighting them against each other and selling them off to really rich people. And she's like this sexy Asian lady in this white outfit. And she has this laser pointer to wherever she points it at, these raptors will attack. And she's like, <sighs> ooh, ah. And it's like, this is so, <laughs> so ridiculously dumb. Again, 80s cartoon show. However, the good moments, and there's three of them. Number one, the dinosaurs. The dinosaur action in this movie is just pure action schlock and I completely embraced it. It was wonderful to see on the big screen. Number two, the original cast was so nice to see back on the big screen again. And number three, there's a character, Ramsey, played by Mamadou Athi. And if I mispronounce that name, I apologize, but he's a new character that they introduced and I actually liked him, you know, quite a bit. He's probably my favorite character in the entire movie, minus the original cast, of course. Now, going back to the dinosaur action, there are a lot of moments near the end of the film, the big climax, where a lot of our characters are trying to escape a bunch of dinosaurs, right? Like this series cannot really escape that. That is at the core of this movie. It is a monster movie. It is a horror movie trying to escape this slasher AKA the dinosaurs. This film does have those moments and they're really, really fun. And you also see a lot of dinosaur versus dinosaur action, which is just fantastic. But in the middle of the movie, there is this action sequence where Owen is riding a motorcycle through Malta and a bunch of raptors are running after him. Great action sequence. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. Really, one of the best of the entire year so far. So again, just pure popcorn fun, it really delivers. And that original cast, Ellie Sadler, wonderful. Alan Grant, he looks great and Ian Malcolm might be one of my favorite characters in movie history. He is so charming, so charismatic. All three of them have wonderful chemistry together. I wish that the whole movie was just about them and then the new characters were just kind of like, but again, they were in the last ones, right? So they, they guess they had to be there. And again, as soon as you say that about a character, they had to be there, it's not really a good sign, isn't it? But this new character, Ramsey, I thought was actually really, really great because he is kind of this young, new, hip, up and coming scientist who kind of takes the place of Hammond. He's the one who really looks up to Hammond and to what he was doing with these dinosaurs. And he's trying to be the next generation of that. And he's the one who's willing to do what's right for these animals. And I thought that he was actually really good in the movie. He was charming, he was charismatic, he was always doing the right thing. We always wanted to root for him. I thought that he should have been in the movie more, but I did like his addition in this movie. He is kind of the Justice Smith replacement. Yes, Justice Smith does show up in this movie for a couple minutes, but yeah, he was pretty, yeah, I can't say it in a nice way. He was awful in the last movie. So for an overall rating from me, I'm gonna give it the same rating that I gave to The King's Man last year, because this movie is very similar. Whereas my film school brain says this movie is terrible, it's awful, it's poorly written, the story and the characters don't make any sense, it's just a bad movie. But for some reason, and I tried to explain it the best I could, I really did enjoy it. I had fun with it. Therefore, I'm giving this movie a three out of five. It is a very guilty pleasure rating, so a very hesitant thumbs up. Just don't expect anything spectacular. If you wanna shut your brain off and eat a bunch of popcorn and see a bunch of dinosaurs trying to eat people, then I feel like this movie's for you. But if you need a deep, complex story with a bunch of characters that are really rich, yeah, look elsewhere. So those are my thoughts on Jurassic World Dominion. What are yours? Leave them down in the comment section down below. And how does this stack up in the Jurassic Park 
franchise. I would say this is probably my third favorite. You know, nothing beats the original. And then I'd go Jurassic World and then Jurassic World Dominion right underneath that. I think it is better than Jurassic Park 3, The Lost World, and Fallen Kingdom. Man, Fallen Kingdom was just atrocious. But whatever your thoughts are, leave them down in the comment section down below. And if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos just like this, then definitely hit like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video. You guys are all rock stars, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.